All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's program, Designing Activism. My name is Alexandra O'Neill, and I'm the Membership and Events Manager for the Wolfsonian. I would like to thank all of you for joining us tonight, and I'm really excited to introduce tonight's guests. First, we have Shoshana Reisnikoff, one of our curators at the Wolfsonian. She co-curated our most recent exhibition, A Universe of Things, and came to Wolfsonian after holding curatorial positions at the Peabody Essex Museum and Cranbrook Art Museum. Joining Shoshana is Steve Saiz and Lillian, Lillian Saiz Banderas, also known as Dale Zine. Dale Zine, established in 2009 in Miami, is an independent printer and publisher with the goal of giving a platform to multimedia artists and designers. Dale has brought in into an open cultural space for the Miami community with offerings ranging from all age zine workshop, workshops to our independent radio show, pop up events, and most recently, a store storefront in downtown Miami. You can visit them at the downtown um, Miami location at the 77 Mall when it reopens, or you can visit them at dalezine.com or Instagram at dale underscore zine. So welcome guys. And Shoshana, do you want to go in depth about how this program got created? Absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to be here uh, with Stephen Lillian. And I think this is going to be um, a really engaging and fruitful conversation. Um, really, this came about because uh, we've long understood at the Wolfsonian that our collection is uh, built around the ability of images and objects to uh, communicate ideas and to influence viewers and users. That's really the, the power um, of the collection at the Wolfsonian is to speak to people. Um, and so therefore, we felt it's really fitting to mine the collection for imagery that both that is kind of connected to protest and also imagery that is totally unconnected um, and uh, see how that, can, that imagery can be put to work um, uh, towards sort of activism around contemporary issues. Um, we were also specifically inspired by uh, Steve and uh, Lillian at Dali Zine to, uh, who have um, offered free design services to activists um, uh, during the recent uprisings and protests uh, in Miami following the uh, murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And um, their work has really kind of inspired us to think about how design can, can function in this moment. Um, and so a group of us got together at the museum, cross-departmentally, to um, start developing what we're calling an image bank, which is a, um, uh, a, just a set of images cult culled from our collection. Again, some of them related directly to protest and activism and others sort of more distant um, uh, that we can make available to designers and to activists um, uh, to, to use, to appropriate, to cut up and rethink, um, uh, recycle, um, to create contemporary uh, work that speaks to this urgent moment. Um, this image bank is still very much in development. Uh, uh, we, are, we are still selecting images, but as sort of a pilot, we invited Stephen Lillian to, um, to uh, look at some of the images and um, see, see what worked for them and what inspired them. And out of that, we decided that this would also be a really great opportunity um, to explore both historical um, objects in our collection, some of which are going to be in the image bank, um, as well as see the work that Stephen Lillian have been doing um, uh, to, to create kind of I iconic and instantly communicative uh, imagery for, for protest um, and for activism. Uh, so we're gonna keep this really loose. It's gonna be very much a conversation between the three of us. Um, uh, we do have some images to share, uh, both again of historical um, uh, protest and poster images, and then as well uh, the work that Dali has been doing. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll just sort of ask each other some questions, talk about what we see in these images, how they came about, and then open it up to questions from uh, the viewers. And so with that, and we'll get started. Um, our first image, once I figure out how to advance, um, interestingly, we're not starting with a protest image. Um, uh, this is a poster that I, I've always found really powerful um, uh, because it is, you know, really communicative and direct. Um, but it is not uh, about protest. It is not sort of about grassroots work. It is published by the government, um, uh, the War Manpower Commission, to be specific, uh, which was um, uh, a campaign to uh, recruit workers and to keep workers uh, working towards the war effort um, during World War II. And so this poster is very much about um, uh, acknowledging the importance of integrating wartime production facilities uh, with that phrase, united we win. 
And I wanted to just open it up to you guys, um, uh, as Stephen Lillian, what you find sort of powerful and compelling and communicative about this image and, um, and how it sort of speaks to you as designers and as um, people trying to kind of communicate with imagery today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, first of all, for having us. This is amazing. Like, we're so honored to be here with you guys. Um, I think it like, I guess, like, historically, the the graphic design piece here is amazing. because like they're using, you know, silk screen and overlaying an image with like, photography, which is like pretty new at that, at that point. But um, I think something you mentioned that I thought was, was still like the message is united, we win, right. But you, I think one of you guys mentioned where we're doing all this, like, that the the African Americans is, is still like under the, the white person and it's kind of like there's like a second le level of like messaging there which is kind of yeah like it means something else at the same time you know so that's what I took from it no absolutely and I think um I think well, the entire sort of composition of the poster you know you start with the flag as this kind of overarching message and then you have um a white man and then you have a black man and then you have this idea of unity. And so when you read it from the top to the bottom, it um, it really kind of stacks those 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 messages. This is in service of America. We're gonna integrate, but don't worry, white dude, you're still you're still top uh, African American man. We've got a job for you. And then together we'll 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 make this happen. And it is yeah, it it is both a message of unity and of and of moving forward, but it is also kind of one that reaffirms the status quo. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I get it's like something, you know, as like, I don't think we would like take, we're not much of a collager and like, it doesn't really speak to us, but I feel like it's something, you know, the intentions here is like, it shows how strong design can be um, with different messaging. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also like, um, uh, really strong use of color. Ooh. Yeah. Um, uh, and the way that, that just with just a, like a very simple strong bold colors you can convey a lot of information and draw attention so um this is your work and so i thought maybe i would let you guys talk a little bit about it and then i have a couple of really specific questions for you about it like um how it came sorry, about it yeah. sorry what was that no you were breaking up a little bit so do you want us to talk about how the, organiz the organizing started and yeah exactly this is an image that you guys designed a set of images and i would love to hear sort of uh what the the uh, origination for it was how it came about um you start. You start? it's your yeah. design oh it's that's all right but, no, but, but it's yours. yeah i mean it's like like everyone were at that you know when all this happened with, with george floyd and brianna taylor and all, it was just like like this has always been happening, right? But it just seemed to hit um, a, like a point where it's just we people can't take it anymore. And they're, I think like a lot of people are just sitting at home here trying to figure out what you can do. Like, what can I offer to figure out, to add some kind of messaging that's gonna help change things They're like a little bit, you know, at least. So I, I started just thinking and we were brainstorming, like, what are we gonna do? You know, like, what is something that we can offer? And then I had this idea that Basically, we we're gonna offer free design services to anyone that was uh, organizing at protest or act, doing any kind of activist work. So, from which, yeah, yeah, which now is like a big, big umbrella. It's outside of a protest sign. You know, people can protest at home. You know, via Instagram, um, passing out you know flyers and things like that. Um, so, you know, there's so much individually we can do you know, uh, researching, you know, donating money, sharing information, but what's something else can be long, like a little bit more long standing. With our skill set, right? So like, we, we got a, we opened it up on Instagram, you know, thinking a, a few people would, you know, would reach out and a lot of, we got a good response of like activists that needed help on their website or they needed social media assets with their message designed in a captivating way. So out of that, a few of our friends, like locally here in Miami, started reaching out to us, um, basically to lend a hand with the program. Yeah. So it was really beautiful to see like a lot of our friends grew that we grew up with are 
are helping us with this work, you know? And, and incredible designers like um, Edwin. Yeah. Um, he, he was just like, I have a team of designers in Miami ready to help you. And then outside yeah. of people who are designers, people are just like, I'm. how can I help? Want me to mail out stickers? Want me to do whatever? Like, every, like there were so many people that were just wanting to help. Way more people that wanted to help than needed help, which is right. incredible. So yeah, let's awesome. describe a little bit more about your stuff, you know, your, your design work. So this, it just started as a sticker, basically. I was like, I want to make a sticker, like a bumper sticker that we can pass out at least, or we can make posters out of. And then from that, we just got, we have a lot of friends that we, over the years we've met at um, art book fairs that we've been doing all over, you know? And a lot of them are print presses like us. So uh, two print presses from, I'd be, they're both from California, right? Um, Resolve Press and Floss Edition for us, they decided to make huge posters for us yeah. with the design. And that's something we've been able to like fundraise on our, on our new web shop yeah. and, you know, donate hundred percent of funds on that. So it's, it just kept growing from this little like sticker design. You know? Yeah. And then also like, you know, Floss Edition did something really great too, was like free printing services for protests. So, and I feel like Oakland and San Francisco had a huge base like that. So it was kind of cool to see our like little, a little zine yeah. community that's like actually international kind of really come together to help each other out. I mean, we even had these stickers printed and posters printed out in Manchester. Yeah, they wow. printed those stickers and posters for us as well to hand out. And yeah, we were setting up like people were coming to our house like every day we would leave little envelopes full of protest materials, and it's yeah. still happening. You know, it's so someone could go to a protest around across the world and see this design. Hopefully, yeah, or another, you know, they'll yeah, see another some, message. Yeah, that's, or, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, but one, it wasn't, uh, sorry to go. Oh, well, I was just gonna say that one thing that really um, uh, grabs me about about these designs, and I think it's really great that they start as, as stickers because that is such an immediate. Uh, 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 like medium, right? Yeah. Right, and I mean, and also like pretty permanent, right? You, like you put a sticker on something, it is hard to get it off. And I like that. I like that sort of like in intention behind that and the intensity of it. Um, but I, I'm really struck by obviously like the black and white, the really like clear, uh, the, the clear graphics. But I would also love to hear more about the font in particular, because I find it very powerful. Yeah, like I guess the, this is a font that I would normally use like in my design stuff, like I, subconsciously I, I sometimes I'm drawn to certain things, you know, but I think like thinking about this more and like thinking about how like much power you have in this like communication with, with these simple like typography pieces. Like I was thinking like, I kind of want this to look like it was printed. Like it could have been from 40, 50 years ago. Cause this, it, to me, it was like, this isn't a new problem, you know, like this could have been forever ago. It's just, videotaped more now than ever, obviously, but I wanted it to feel aged like that, you know, like it could have been in your, in your collection, even, you know, like an yeah. old screen print or something. Absolutely. Do you, do you find that in your work, you are often sort of mining, if not direct historical sources, then at least sort of historical inspiration? Yes, definitely. Like there's, you know, there's so many people inspiring me now, like, but I always look back, you know, like always love the, like, like we talked like a little bit about Emory Douglas and like the yeah. Cuban revolutionary posters that I'm obsessed with that the OSPAAL group made, you know, and like, and now I know about the rebel arts group that you'll go into later. But. Yeah, and I guess, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like newer to design than, you know, than Steve is and he's taught me so much about it and like the power of design, even like what we do for our day jobs and things like that is very much an advertising and how important and how like strong fonts can do for something. And like Steve was saying something like, oh, if something was that like the message is right there, but if you could like maybe make the font a little bit bigger or if the font was a little bit more funner, people could actually like, see the message clearer. Um, or bolder and iconic. Yeah, yeah like, and it's something I've never really thought about or I mean, like, but then like, you know, he shows me a great book about you know, Cuban revolutionary protest signs and it, it's like, it could be like a coffee table book, but then you, you, you there's a, crazier message behind it. Right. I do I do also think there's something playful about these. And we talked a little bit about that earlier, just the three of us, but that um that which is like uh oh go terribly weird thing to say about about 
a serious matter. Protest yeah. stickers and protest signs that they should be playful. But that sort of that juxtaposition is really um, is really arresting, right? Like a poor choice of words right. is very um, uh, uh, yeah. It kind of captures your attention um, because it does feel like like yeah, a, like a that. font that is you know kind of groovy for lack of a better word, but then it has this really powerful and, and serious message. Yeah, like looking back on it, like it, it's, it is like the 60s looking font, you know, and it's like, it is something that you could possibly see, you know, in a civil rights movement that would look kind of like this, you know, like I wanted it to feel kind of aged in that way, you know, because it's like, I, I see a lot of like protest materials that are, they're all amazing, you know, but like I wanted something in my, that felt aged in a way, you know, like, it felt kind of important to me that to like, communicate that this isn't new, you know, Yeah. Like this could have been on an old poster somewhere. I also will just say, um, before we move on that I, I really like the little kind of starbursty or sunbursty um, moments, because they feel also a little like, like, a, like a little vintage, a little 80s, 90s, even. Um, but, uh, but they feel like stickers on top of stickers, which is just like a fun little layering. Yeah, like the, like if this were to actually been printed in the 60s, like they would have probably used like wood, wood cutouts, which um, we've learned a lot about like through IS projects. Have you guys heard mm -hmm. of like locally down here? They do a lot of amazing posters like this. Um, but using, you know, wood cutouts and metal plates. So those are all like little plates that you would get a long time ago. And just if you needed a starburst, which is like a call to action, you would use that. So I kind of wanted it to feel like that and put in really key messaging in there. Yeah. So like your the hierarchy of like, you know, the big overall message and then another message within it, you know. Definitely. Um, so you also were really committed to printing in multiple languages. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I think like, especially living in Miami, there's so many uh, languages that, that we get to be surrounded around and everyone, you know, that lives here, you, like even if you're like, just like moved here yesterday, you know a little bit of Spanish. Like just, you know, like everyone, and so there's people that has lived here for many years I have, and they know, you know, they've never had to learn English. And this is also like, you know, a big conversation is that we start at home, you know, of, of the change that needs to happen. So, um, you know, people have grandfathers and grandparents, they have to have, to have these hard conversations, or maybe they actually are on the right side, or, you know, are on a, what, are, what we think is the right side of this conversation. And, you know, it, this is a great way to spread that message that, you know, as multicultural Miami is, that we all are kind of going through, you know, through this movement, movement together. Um, and also just the respect of it, you know, like um, the US and Miami, there's so many cultures, especially in Miami. Yeah, like alongside of this, um, you might have seen in like the, fo the folder we shared that there's, there's, you know, important voting dates that we had a bunch of friends help with, you know, translations and um, we had pamphlets that that talk about, you know, all in Spanish, like what does defund the police mean? Because that's, mm -hmm. for a Hispanic, you know, like I can't imagine like my uncle or something, he would not understand that right away. Like, so the, the pamphlet really breaks it down. And um, our friend Roy Hunter helped us with that as well. Because he lives, he lives in Little Havana and it's like, he's having these conversations every day with his neighbors and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's tough. Yeah, yeah he, it was actually a conversation had at a bus stop. So this yeah. person probably isn't on Instagram. You know, right. this person probably doesn't have a computer at home. So that's why printing we think is still really important. But he went home and he like decided to write in Spanish what all these things that are happening really mean in Spanish. And so we could pass them around and like in in parts of the town that English is not the main language. Right. Yeah, we were we were lucky. We were able to get all this stuff printed too. Like so much support from our friends down here. Like the the stickers are printed from like for free from Creative Creative, and we were able to even print all this stuff because IS Projects donated a a massive printer a really to us. Printer, yeah. And it's like it was just all happened with like the community, you know, which is really 
at the core of like what we try to do with Dolly's in forever, you know, and like what we're gonna keep doing, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is all work from every like everybody. everyone. Yeah, yeah, this is like it was really awesome to see everyone come together and we're like a bigger goal, you know. Definitely. I also, um, I mean, obviously you guys translated things into Spanish, but you also translated things into Haitian Creole, which is, you know, sort of like the third semi-official language of Miami, which is also, I think, really important. Yeah, that was, that was uh, something we, we decided like we had to do as well. Yeah, and it was, it was actually kind of difficult because we want to get um, the right translation, like, right? We, we would, you know, go back and forth, we'd go yeah. back and forth and we get a couple different types of translation never it was never one like oh this is exactly what it means or this is how exactly how you say it so um we just want to be very careful and respectful absolutely um i think uh this is another historical image this is sadly not in our collection um but i i wanted to pull it out because i think it is an interesting sort of um one of the things that we see in this imagery is the way that that actually like two images can really speak to each other unintentionally um, and uh, the double V campaign uh, was actually something that in many ways was connected to um, and pushing back on that sort of united we win uh, uh, image from the very beginning, which is very much sort of the, the federal government's image of what of what a integrated and unified uh, uh, workforce could look like, kind of everyone coming together for a goal, but still reinforcing those hierarchies. And the double V campaign in, um, in the United States happening at the same time in 1942 was um, a campaign launched by the Pittsburgh Courier, which was the largest black newspaper in the United States um, and part of this sort of network of black owned newspapers. Um, uh, FDR actually uh, wrote uh, letters to communicated with the owners of these black newspapers and basically said like, um, the black press needs to be more supportive of the war effort. Like you need to commit more to us and to the war effort. And uh, their response was the double V campaign, which is like, okay, democracy abroad, but also democracy at home. Um, uh, one of the activists who was behind it, James uh, G. Thompson, and excuse me, I'm just gonna read this really quickly, wrote uh, in the Pittsburgh Courier, should I sacrifice to live as half American? And so his, the whole argument about this campaign, which uses this imagery, um, was that, um, was a sort of activist uh, effort to integrate um, uh, the armed services, because at this point, uh, the US military was was segregated um, and to um, and to integrate factories in a way that allowed black people black Americans to get um, equal access to jobs as white Americans and be managers and be sort of be leaders within the community and within the the factory work environment um, and so it's this sort of pushing back against that um, against that that ideology and this sort of activist response to that imagery. And I guess I'm just, I mean, I, I think this is very much, you know, th these are kind of aesthetically very different from the sort of work that you do. Um, but I'm curious, like, like, what you think the, the, the role of these sort of responses is and what you see in this image that sort of lends itself to that. No, I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful piece of like, graphic design, but I love when there's like a rationale for everything, you know, and like, everything on the page is, is, is striking and has a purpose, you know? And I, I do love the fact that he, FDR pushed on them, like they need to like convey this message more, but then they're like, they agreed in a way, but then they wrote at home. Right. Abroad, you know? So it's like the bigger message in here is like at home, like what's happening here, you know? So I thought that was interesting. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> It's really striking. I really like this piece. What was the name of the designer? Um, I don't actually know the name of the designer, uh, sadly. Oh, okay. uh, but the, one of the activist leaders was uh, James G. Thompson. G. Thompson. That's interesting. Yeah. No, but yeah, sadly, I have not. If you do you uncover the name of this designer, please let me know. I yeah, really no, I want to just research the paper, too. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I think it's also, uh, uh, you talked about this sort of like twisting of that message um, um, of taking the idea of, of FDR's message of, you know, come on, get with the team, work with us, you know, be part of this war effort. Um, and the way that there were other organizations that were also really committed to arguing like, okay, if we're fighting, if we're fighting fascism, we also need to, uh, 
to fight oppression at home. Um, and so this is a poster from the NAACP, also sadly not in our collection, I would love to add it, um, uh, about um, a, uh, sort of advocating for um, uh, uh, African-American involvement in the war effort and also recognizing that um, at Nazism and fascism and um, the Japanese, you know, the Axis powers and Jim Crow have are sort of interconnected um, uh, as as um, as entities. And here again, I think um, much like with your designs, which are all about sort of the starkness of the black and the white and the really like the powerful lettering. I think this is obviously like a lot more specific to its time period with multiple kinds of lettering and font. Um, uh, but it is again kind of using um, using font and color to really convey a very specific message and then with that sort of incredible bird in the center. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. I think this is like the perfect example of like graphic design hierarchy, you know, like you could, you could probably see this image down the street, like in a wall way back in here, like you would see like what there, there's a crow being choked or something. There's flames, like it's going to grab your attention and the, the messaging is all laid out perfectly and like like this, the, the typography, like in the top, you know, like there's like a slogan, but then it goes into the big headline. Like it's all your eye goes where it needs to, you know? Right, so it's, right. It's an order of like importance, you know? Yeah, and I think you're right about, I think you're right about the immediacy of the image because even like, come let us take counsel together is a relatively, um, uh, not gentle exactly, but it's not it's not a combative phrase. But the um, the aggression of the image tells yeah. you what you need to know about how important this is. Yeah. What year is this? Nineteen forty-four. Oh wow. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about or sort of how this design on the left um, emerged. But I think maybe what I can explain at the beginning is just that um, well that chain is one of the sort of pieces from the design, the image bank. So with that in mind, do you, do you wanna share a little bit about um, how you took the idea of that chain and turned it into the design on the left? Yeah, I mean, this was, this was one of the images that I, that I saw in the collection that was given to me, you know, and I was, I, I thought that, you know, that was the first thing you looked at, like again with the hierarchy, like I looked at that first before, you know, for, the top it's even larger it's bolder right? my eye went there first you know um which that's not even the film but it's the chain around it is what makes it you know and i thought that would be perfect for to symbolize like the messaging on the left which i use this um and police brutality um and i really liked how the chain was broken like the messaging there would be like we're not this isn't going to happen forever like we're going to break this cycle you know um but I thought that was just like a great design, little clip art to grab and use and run with, you know? That's what's so around yeah. the, the collection. There's like little bits you can take and repurpose, you know, for a positive message there. Absolutely. I like the idea of, of, of our collection providing and, and the image bank providing sort of like radical clip art. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very cool to me. Well, one of the things that I, one of the things that I think is sort of not ironic exactly, but interesting about, about the poster is that um, when we included it in the image bank, we definitely like you were seeing the chain as like the primary element. And that's what we really wanted to take from it. And even frankly, we're like, okay, well, this is a movie poster. It doesn't really have anything to do with protest. It doesn't have anything to do with politics, but we feel comfortable sort of, um, uh, inviting people to to take something that is apolitical and take elements of it and make it political, right? And make it uh, activist oriented. And um, that's that's the power of of design and art that you can you can reuse and, and appropriate and and kind of uh, recontextualize. Um, but this is a poster from um, a movie, uh, Rompiendo las Cadenas, which uh, was actually also, it was actually produced in the United States. Um, and it was called We Were Strangers in the US. And then when it was released in Latin America, it was released under this other title. Um, and it is, and I didn't realize this again before we selected this image for the image bank, but it is actually a very political film um, that is about um, uh, the, um, uh, kind of uh, revolutionaries fighting against the Machado regime in in Cuba 
uh, in the 1930s. And so it is, um, oh. they're, they're actually trying to assassinate members of the Machado um, uh, administration. And Machado was a dictator. Um, and, and it begins with an assassination, the whole film. And it's, it's one of John Huston's films. And it was his first um, financial flop. It was a total failure in the, in the theater, in large part, because reviewers and audiences felt that it was too activist and too radical and that it was, um, they called it communist propaganda and, uh, and felt that um, it was a, um, yeah, this like, like crazy out there. Um, it, was, it was a movie about uh, uh, revolutionaries and activists pushing against oppression and and the the viewers were like, no, it's it's communist, <laughs> um, and so uh, it was a total failure. And of course, you know, it, it starred a number of Latin American important Latin American stars, but the, the two main stars were were uh, white Americans. Um, and so I think it is I like kind of not ironic again, but but uh, surprising and kind of a wonderful twist that this thing that we chose that had that we just chose for that great chain image there's a, the chain is there for a reason and that reason is that it is a movie that it's on some level around, about fighting um, yeah that's, like i love examples of, of like that where like everything on a page has like a purpose like i mentioned before it's like there has to be a rhyme or reason for everything when you're designing something you know like that's what that's what i i guess i i didn't know that all that coming into <laughs> to grabbing that right. but I, I knew how i wanted to use it you know and like have it serve a purpose there Absolutely. I also am interested in the way that the image sort of your image layers, like what looks like stickers, like in a pile. Um, and I'm wondering about like what sort of motivated that approach and, and what the goal was. I, I guess I just thought it was, it was really interesting to see like, like if you're, if this were on a wall somewhere and you know, everybody was just post like plastering it, multiple people feel this way. It, like, in my head, there was like millions, you know, so like I kind of wanted it to feel like those were the voice of like a lot of people, I guess, like, yeah, and also yeah. like subconsciously, like Milton Glaser had a, he's my favorite designer, he had a poster where he did actually put stickers on, and I always thought that was cool. <laughs> right, right. So, but yeah, like, I, and also the, the layered chains looked really cool to me, it looked like it was like kind of like this bondage thing, you know. Definitely. Like that's what made it stronger to me, I guess. That's actually a great transition to our next image, um, which is from uh, from the Wolfsonian collection, also part of the Image Bank, um, uh, which is a booklet called Equality, Land, and Freedom, uh, published by the League uh, of Struggle for Negro Rights, which was a communist, an, an organization um, underneath the umbrella of the Communist Party of the United States of America. Um, and they, uh, the Communist Party in the United States very, very much saw civil rights as a recruitment tool, um, uh, arguing that, that uh, Black Americans had been clearly and obviously mistreated for generations under capitalism, so communism could be um, uh, the vehicle through which they could achieve uh, equal rights. And um, a lot of organizations underneath the Communist Party used civil rights as sort of a recruitment tool, but were not necessarily led by Black Americans and were not sort of, um, you know, we, we might think of it as sort of um, opportunistic. Uh, but the, the League of Struggle for Negro Rights was um, sort of uh, Black-led and, and many of the members were Black themselves. Um, Langston Hughes was the president for, for at least a couple of years. Um, and this is um, um, a program from that sort of lays out their uh, their their new bill of rights and their new um, sort of vision for for a, a communist America. Um, and this was an image that that we made available. And this was um, the the design that you came up with. Yeah, like again, like I found I saw something there that we could use, which is the the striking image of the the man breaking the chains. And I thought that was just like the striking piece, just kind of like we we showed in the Jim Crow poster, you know, like the end Jim Crow. Like, there's just there has to be something for me where it just draws you in, and then you might want to read the rest of the the copy, or sometimes the copy is the thing that draws you in if that's what you want to be higher in the hierarchy of importance, you know. Um, and then it just went. I just grabbed that image. I kind of didn't want to change it too much. Um, the copy, I, I kind of wanted to match the font because it was 
nice and bold and attracted your your eye to go there too um and these messages like i i don't remember where i saw that i might have just written it down in a journal and then i something clicked in my head i was like that the person you know opening the breaking the chain sorry worked well with that headline so a lot of a lot of times yeah when i'm designing i try to you know like mo every designer like put image to copy and see what is going to work best for your communication there Definitely. And I was especially, we're drawn for that other pamphlet you showed us. It's, that's kind of, that's basically how, you know, zine culture started, like, with, with civil rights pamphlets. They were basically zines. They were just yeah. stapled, bounded yeah. information, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it's, I just love these things, you know, and, like, how they were probably pretty, like, half-sized at the time, and you had to get somebody's attention and have them want to read it if you were just but possibly standing outside and distributing, you know? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I also find really, um, you were talking about sort of matching image to copy and finding the right words. In this case, the image was what you were leading with. So what are the words that, that can support it? And because I am, you know, I, I, I am a classic example of the curator, you know, those, those who can't teach, or in my case, those who can't write, like I'm not a particularly talented artist, but I, I like to write. Um, and uh, and so I find the rhythm of the phrasing, break the chains that bind, build the bonds of change, to be, I mean, A, pleasing to the ear, right? Like that has a nice, um, enjoyable sort of rhythm to it, but also the use of the word, um, chain, the words chains, bind, and bond, because um, uh, we have that imagery of the chains breaking, but then also, uh, bond, bond is, of course, connected to bondage, which, which speaks to enslavement and speaks to imprisonment. Um, uh, but here you've sort of recon reconceptualized bonds um, and sort of connected it to the more positive understanding of something that kind of ties people together willingly. Um, uh, so there's this really great um, uh, flipping of language that I really like uh, in this design. That also, I think, you know, has some of the same sort of weight of, of equality, land, and freedom. Those are like big ideas, and that feels very kind of um, uh, historic to be talking about those, right? It feels almost old-fashioned today to be talking about equality, land, and freedom. And I think similarly, um, uh, talking about chains and binding and bondage feels old-fashioned in a way that's very um, invigorating for the moment we're in. Yeah, I mean... Aside from, you know, this activist work, you don't want to be so much, uh, how do I say, like CSA with your image to, to copy, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you want to have a deeper message, but I'm, I'm happy you read into that and, it, you know, I don't know if necessarily I thought of all that, <laughs> but it's, it's nice that and it's- And that's my uh, job, right? I'm yeah. the person who reads into things. Yeah. Yeah, but also like I feel like sometimes like, you know, protest signs are, are so immediate, like, yeah. You see it today for end pictures of the, of the past. It's just a piece of cardboard, cardboard and something written, and it's powerful. It's immediate, and yeah, like sometimes it's just inspo that you get, or you maybe saw something, or or it's the first thing that comes into mind, you know. And yeah, it just clicks there. Does it, there. Doesn't have to be so much pressure. Yeah, like we're obsessed with just like the, I think it like in design, like things that are iconic, like the the Black Panther symbol, like how do those things come to be and why do they work and why do they last like forever, you know? So we're, we're really obsessed with like just bold and iconic graphics for this thing, like historically, you know? Absolutely. So um, the last couple of images, um, uh, you guys did not design anything in response to them, but I think that they um, uh, speak to something that you were talking about, which is sort of this ability to to kind of paste together elements and reuse them and sort of, and all of, you know, all of the designs you guys have been doing for these protests have been really kind of iterative. Um, and so I wanted to, to, to talk about them and get your thoughts. Um, uh, this is work by, in the Wolfsonian collection by the Rebel Arts Group, um, which was a, um, uh, an artist, like a radical artist organization in New York in the 30s, um, mostly a theater group, which I love the idea of like radical theater. Um, uh, uh, and um, they also made these banners. They screen, they did a lot of printing of these banners. Um, and 
uh, they always have sort of like a, a strong graphic and a pithy phrase. But what is so interesting is that this group is, is you know, um, known, but not a particularly famous um, activist group in New York. And I, I, you know, I don't think there are a ton, there's a ton of their work out there anymore. But a couple of years ago, there was this trove sort of discovered at a, at, at a print shop. Um, and what you can see in these banners um, is the way that they did reuse, um, uh, if they found an image that worked, they put it to work for a lot of different messages. And so the banner on the left, um, Stop Lynching, Shave of America, is in our collection. It's actually, if you managed to come to um, our exhibition, Universe of Things, before we closed to the public, you saw it. Um, uh, uh, but then they also printed, you know, they, they changed out the text and, and printed a version about around child labor. Um, uh, and, and this is something that they do sort of um, uh, again and again. And I'm interested in sort of, a, your thoughts about the design of these, but also that kind of, um, that swappability of text and image. Yeah, like, I, I love these examples. Like, I thought how, it was really great how a thoughtful designer thought ahead and they were like, you know, back at, like, what is this, 1939. So there was all, they would have to screen print these and draw on the screens probably to like get the, the negative uh, black transfer like all the red that you see. But they thought they thought far ahead, they were like, we're gonna just, we're gonna have to create a template basically to keep this going. So what's what's an image that's gonna work for our overall uh, communication that we wanna spread, you know? And like they, they thought very simply like the hands with the sign, like the, we're out here, we're protesting, we're doing activist work. What's, what's something that's gonna work? Um, can I see? Oh, sorry. <laughs> So it's, 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 it's really cool and like how it works for each and like they, it's really impressive for 1939, how beautiful and like, this is something that you could see now, you know? Um, and what I liked, like we, we even did this, like when we're doing our, when we're still doing our, uh, our activist like design work for, for people that are emailing us and we thought this would be a great way to help people as well to create templates. Mm. So like we have like some central design elements, put your, put this font here with a, a symbol, a strong, maybe a, a fist or something. We did that for a few folks and it ended up working really well. So I think just like, is a great example of how you could just like, anybody could do this basically, you know, like with a little help maybe, you know, um, but I really love this example. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think that these are, you know, they are, what I, one thing I also really like about them is how committed they are to kind of tying together, um, uh, uh, you know, civil rights and workers' rights and sort of, uh, it's, it's an early version of uh, none of us is free until all of us are free. Um, and I, uh, I, I think about your guys' designs, I mean, the way that you have, um, uh, we don't have an image of it here, but you know, um, uh, you have black the imagery that says Black Lives Matter. You have the imagery that say Trans Lives Matter. Right, like, that there is this sort of sense that 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 we're we're not just advocating for. I mean, this is this is a moment where you're talking about how Black Lives Matter, but also um, that um, that sort of work is is intertwined. And so, in the same way that these images can be um, interchanged, not because they don't mean anything, but because they they apply to all these all, across across groups and, and and across sort of um uh intersectional oppressions and so i find that um like a really interesting sort of through line from that this design to your design yeah and, and i think just to fill on like the idea of templates like for someone that may, might not be a creative but they have important messages that they need to come you know to say it's a great way tool and also a um, budget you know i'm sure especially back then like this isn't cheap to make um, you know, design takes time, you know, all these things. So it's a great way to make templates to keep the message going, you know, um, because what's the, it's the information of, of what's worth the most, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and thinking about these things, it's, it's not, you're not trying to make a portfolio piece here. You know, you're, you're spreading a positive message that needs to be heard and spread far, you know? So it's, or not, it's more about functionality more than anything, you know? 
At least, with, yeah, like I, I can imagine that's what they were thinking, you know. And uh, like a little bit of a, that thing, we, we feel the same way, you know. Like it's just make something in black and white, it's cheaper, you could print it. Make sure there's not a lot going on on the page. So if somebody, you know, like holds it up and down the street, you could see it and the message can be read, you know, 15 feet away. Or, I mean, outside of like a protest sign, like on like an infographic on Instagram. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, I think um, make it affordable, make it replicable, uh, make it clear are sort of, um, uh, and, you know, do it in as many ways as you can are, are kind of, uh, good lessons that you guys have obviously um, applied and taught to others, but are, is also sort of this through line as well. Um, and so with that, unless you guys have anything else to add, I think I might turn it over to Alex to um, share some questions. Thank you guys. I think I definitely took some mental notes, also typed some, some other notes as well. Uh, we are going to open um, the Q&A, so if you do have a question um, for Dalai Zine, or if you have a question for Sh Shoshana, um, for some of the images that you saw, or if you have questions uh, just about their practice or anything beyond maybe some more historical context um, with some of the images that Shoshana shared, feel free to ask your question. Um, I just really loved hearing, you know, kind of like the process of you guys creating the images, um, the one with the chain, especially just having like that repetitive, like kind of stickering effect on the design is like, it's so striking and it's it's one of my favorites. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, because even like, you know, the end police brutality, the Black Lives Matter, um, those work so well together and separately. So, you know, I definitely see you know, the success of it being like a sticker. I, I absolutely love the fact that you guys have it in different languages. That's very representative of the Miami community. So I'm just loving the work that you're doing. And thank you, thank Shoshana, you. for going over some of the images we have in our collection. Really? Um, so we have a question from Dan. If there are any AIDS activist posters in the image bank? That's a great question. Um, uh not currently but we have we are actually currently working on an exhibition um uh, this is something that's being uh co-curated with um uh julio capo from the wolfsonian public humanities lab who's an fiu faculty member um he is uh working with uh with the museum to put together an exhibition of our um aids posters uh, which we have quite a collection of um and i think there are certainly some that can and should be added to the to the image bank um, so that's a great idea uh, and one that I'm going to write down. <laughs> um, we did receive a comment earlier from Vivian that um, I think it was the the breaking the the chains. Yeah, going yeah, break the chains that bind. Um, she did say that that font reminds her of like the famous "I Am a Man" poster. Mm. Um, and so, I, and I know that that font was obviously copied from or replicated from the original. So I think it's just interesting to see, I guess, where people are putting the connections on when it Sorry, comes to what, fonts. What was it that it was, I couldn't hear from the- Oh, the I am a man um, poster. Do you know oh, that okay. image? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. I mean, and yeah. I think to, to Stephen Lyon's point from the very beginning, when we were talking about that sort of 70s font too, that like these are, these 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 all belong on a historical spectrum um and none of these things none of these just as none of these protests of all occur in a vacuum the design doesn't occur in a vacuum and so each each mm. the what we are experiencing now and what we are fighting for now is a um is a is a direct product of the civil rights movement and so too is the design that is being produced um influenced in in ways conscious and unconscious i think um so i think that's a really great point um, I think we just have time for maybe one more question. If anyone, I think, let's see. We have one from Helena. Um, she said, are there any handmade protest signs um, by anonymous non-designer citizens? Um, I think that might be in the, she's referring to the collection. Anonymous non-designer citizens. Well, if they're anonymous, we wouldn't know if they were designers. So that's a really, that's a, I mean, that's a good point. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we definitely have posters where we don't know the designer. Um, uh, some of the some of the governmental ones, which again are not protest posters, but certainly are sort of uh, information conveying and and uh, activist in their desire to get people to act, if not truly activist in the way we understand that word. Um, uh, sometimes we don't know who designed those. They did tend to be, we assume, professional designers um, or artists or photographers. Um, there are we have in the library a lot of ephemera some of which is a little bit more um, homegrown than, than, than others. And I think that's where you tend to find sort of untrained um, uh, designers. Although I will also say that like um, what uh, formal graphic design training is, is uh, not that old and lots of people found themselves in the field of graphic design um, uh, having not maybe training, having trained as artists, maybe not having any sort of academic or educational background in it. Um, so I think that, and Steve uh, and Lillian, you guys can speak to this. I see your heads nodding. Oh yeah, I'm saying me completely. I'm not, uh, my background in like education and what I do for a living, I, I'm in like, I do styling and props and I do set design. Steve's taught me everything about graphic design. I mean. She's taught me a lot. No, but you know, it's just like, I, I want to do something, so I just I kind of figure it out as I go. I'm yeah. lucky to have someone that's like you know, that's really well versed in it. But it just it kind of empow it's empowering. It's like in anything that you do, you know, you have to start somewhere to kind of figure it out. Yeah, and I, I I can imagine a lot of a lot of these groups just learns by doing, you know, and like all these posters are like insane graphic design like pieces that. They, they now put in like textbooks probably when you go, you know, study at Art Institute or something, but they they just did this stuff by like, I don't know, like what, I think they they might have thought the things we're talking about here, like what's gonna convey our message the quickest and what what can become iconic. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're, in terms they're doing like branding at the same time without knowing, you know, so it's. I, I think that's like why we like, we are so like driven to zines small like publishing because it's not really driven from like academic academically yeah, you know yeah you want to put stuff out there that's what we've always loved like anybody you know can can be an artist pretty much and can do these things you know but just your if your intentions are there um that's what could push you forward and that's yeah like Lynn said like we've always done like a lot of our books that we've published in the at the beginning especially were by friends that were doing insane art pieces but they didn't consider themselves artists necessarily until right. we kind of started making stuff and you know but it's i really like that point yeah yeah i like i like this idea that in many ways zines are are are, are that those sort of like homegrown diy just you know figure, figure it out by doing uh uh and therefore really connected to a history a long history of design um, that isn't academic and is very, um, yeah, like you said, very, very sort of self-driven and you, you want to see it, so you make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to end tonight's program. Um, I would like to thank our guests, Steve, Lillian, Shoshana. Thank you guys so much for spending your evening with us. Thank, um, you. thank you for everyone who um, attended tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's program, we would like to support the Wolfsonian. We would love for you to become a member. You can join our on our website um, to stay connected with us through member exclusive programs and online and offline perks. Uh, we also recommend that you sign up for our newsletter online to stay up to date with upcoming programs and events. Um, and definitely check out Dolly Zine's great work. Yes, and check out Dolly Zine at dollyzine.com. Um, visit them Thank at 777 you. International Mall when it opens or on Instagram at, at dolly underscore zine. Um, with, with that, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you all. Bye, guys.